Welcome to Whispers to a Bride, where we talk about the stuff no one else is talking about. We are going deep on the emotional aspects of getting married, the stress, drama, and turbulence that affects your own sense of identity and your closest relationships. We are talking about what it means to be a bride and how to navigate the sacred time with more grace and ease. I'm your host, Kara Gassabe. As a life coach and therapist, I'm going to be sharing super practical tips so that you can not only rise to the occasion of your wedding, but also your life. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Whispers to a Bride. So excited to be here with you, sitting in front of my Christmas tree. Just really didn't want this season to go by without giving you a little episode on how to navigate the holidays, five tips for managing family gatherings with your fiance or your new partner if you have just recently gotten married. And also, these tips can help no matter how long you've been in the game. I've been married almost eight years next week, and it's always a good reminder. I'm telling you, the family stuff around the holidays gets really intense, and especially when you are in that engaged, newlywed sort of time period, it can be really difficult because there are lots of landmines that you might not be thinking of. You've got sort of your holiday traditions and what you envision, then you've got what you want to do as a couple, as like a new family unit, and then there's your in-laws and what they're expecting and hoping for, and it can just get to be a lot. And then you're also carrying with you sort of all of the memories and the history of all of those holidays from your past. And for some people, those are all really good memories. But for a lot of people, those can be also really a mixed bag. Sometimes the hardest moments in family dynamics really comes out during the holidays because they can be such an intense time because of, as we know, high expectations, lots of money on the line, people coming together, and just those intense family dynamics can really come up around the holidays. So you might also be carrying lots of baggage, carrying some like emotional trauma and memories around the holidays that are going to make you sort of more in your fight or flight response, a little shorter tempered, a little more sensitive, a little more stressed and frazzled and not always in your most easygoing solution oriented headspace. So it's super normal if you're finding the holidays, you want them to be so fun and so special and so beautiful and you're finding them like overwhelming and stressful and just like a lot. I just really want to normalize that for you. It is really the case with most people and it takes, I think, a lot of emotional work to have the holiday that you intend to have. And I didn't say the perfect holiday, right? Save that for the social media feed if you want a glimpse of what perfection looks like, even though behind the scenes we all know that's not true. I think giving yourself that reminder that you can have a great holiday experience just in the same way you can have a great wedding experience despite all the pressure and all the intensity of it, but you just want to do some of that emotional legwork beforehand to really smooth your path. That is going to give you the best chance of having the holiday experience that you want and that you deserve and that you long for. So as I said at the beginning, at the top of the show, we are going to give you five tips to try to help you, whether it's too late this season and you can start to plant the seed for next year, or this will come in, you know, just in time for navigating this holiday season. But it also works for birthday parties and some, you know, family vacations and whatever it is. It's not just sort of this holiday time. There's lots of different touch points throughout the year where people come together. And that's why I think it's super worth pausing for a second and considering these things. And like I said just a minute ago, already start to think about family vacations, if that's where it's coming up. Tip number one is anticipate. That's the thing about holidays. We don't want to pretend like we're caught off guard. Holidays come around every year. They just do. And the older you get, the quicker they come around. That's just the way time works, right? It feels quicker. And I think one of the biggest sort of 
stress points with the holidays is this feeling of being rushed and pulled in a lot of directions and having to navigate and consider a lot of logistics in a really short period of time, right? Then it can be like, well, wait, if we go there, how will we go there? How do we book this flight? How can we send gifts? How can we, like, it's a lot if you don't anticipate it. So I think what I want you to start to think about is it's not too early. It's never too early to start thinking about it. Even if it feels like it's, you know, you hate when the stores are putting out all this stuff early. I'm not saying you need to shop early for things, but what I am saying is like, when you see all these things start coming out, be like, wow, it's definitely time to think about, right? And anticipate what do we want to happen for the holidays? And what would we like it to look at? Start again, visualizing, play these things out in your mind and being really real with yourself that like they're going to roll around and if you don't plan for it, it could potentially be harder to navigate all of those logistics, like I said. So the first gift I want you to give yourself around a holiday is anticipating what you're going to need to do, what other people are going to be expecting of you, what you're going to need to think about and to put in motion to give yourself the ability to have some fun and relaxation as well. So number one, anticipate. Let's just not foxhole. Let's not pretend it's not coming. Holidays are always coming. Number two, we are going to communicate. We're going to talk about it. We are going to sit down first and foremost with ourselves and think about like, what do we want out of this holiday? What would feel fun and exciting and interesting? And then we're going to talk to our partner, right? There's a lot of emotions that come up with holidays, like I said. And so the more you sort of talk it through, and listen to your partner like what are they expecting what are they wanting what do they dread about the holidays what are their biggest fears what are their like hang-ups and baggage and triggers around it talk about those things because the more you sort of can get on the same page then you'll be able to much more seamlessly navigate the family friend aspect of it and after we sort of listen to ourselves about it, listen to our partners, really talk and have those conversations, then I want you to get the conversations going with the people that you are expected to spend holidays with. So whether it's your family or your partner's family or friend groups or whatever it is, start those conversations earlier than later. Like, hey, what are we thinking? Let's nail down a date. Let's do this. I think we're going to be out of town, right? Whatever it is that you need to communicate, whether you want the gatherings or you want to opt out of a gathering or you want to combine different groups that might not have come together before as like a new idea. Sometimes that happens in that sort of engaged new label place. You're like, you know what? We always are a guest. We want to host and we want to bring two sides together. And that can be really different. It needs to be communicated ahead of time. It cannot just live in your brain as like this great idea because again, holidays, everyone has their own ideas and images. And if you want to do something different, you're going to need to give people time to digest that. So communicate early what you are thinking and doing. Number three, expect. Let's talk about expectations. This is again, so big with our weddings as well, but there are all of these sort of unspoken rules and standards around holidays that people just like have in their mind. And they end up being like booby traps that ruin our holiday celebrations. So I don't want you to assume stuff. I want you to communicate expectations. If you are having people over at your house and you expect them to bring gifts or you absolutely don't want them to bring gifts if you expect them to bring food or you really don't want them to bring food or you want it to be dressy and they want it to be casual whatever it is let's talk it through timelines like oh when you're invited to my house dinner is casual we serve it when it feels right or it's like uh oh when we're at my mother's house i need to tell my partner like dinner will be at 6 30 and you need to be dressed up right i think a lot of that expectation management is so important and we forget sometimes to explain what we are expecting from our guests and we forget to communicate to our partner what to expect from our family or friend get together. So really thinking about those expectations. What are your expectations? Are there any things you're thinking in your head that might not be obvious to the other people around you? And really just kind of think through and sort through this whole idea of expectations. That's the first way I want you to think about expectations. The other way is that I want you to expect the things that you know are going to happen to happen. This is where we get into lots of trouble when we just decide that like our people are going to be different people because it's the holidays and everything's supposed to be gorgeous and happy and wonderful and warm and laughing and giving and appreciating. We forget that like people are going to be people. 
every single day. And so don't expect the annoying behaviors to not happen. I want you to expect them to happen. And the thing about expecting those things to happen, it hurts a lot less. Because then you're like, oh, this is just my drunk uncle drinking too much instead of like, how dare he, right? Once you take away the shock and surprise, then you can just deal with like, oh, I knew this would happen. It's not my favorite thing. I don't like it when it happens. It doesn't mean you're approving or condoning things that you don't like, but you can expect them. And then expecting them also can help you think about ahead of time, what are my workarounds? Oh, this is the part where I just like exit stage left, or this is the part where I go help my mom with this, or this is the part, you know, whether it's talking about politics or whatever those are, you know, a sibling who does their like annual whiny, what was me situation, whatever it is, I want you to sort of anticipate and expect it. And then that will take out so much of the sting of it and help you navigate it with a lot more grace and ease and not let it sort of blow up the whole experience when you're just like, oh yeah, this is part of it. I expected that to happen. I knew something was going to go wrong. Like someone's going to forget something or burn the food or have a hissy fit, whatever it is that you know is going to happen. Let's just run through that and remind yourself that like even on these beautiful special holidays, that's going to happen. And then number four, I want you to enjoy. I think sometimes, especially as women, we tend to be the carriers and creators and makers of a lot of the holiday traditions. And it can be a workload, right? Whether it's the, like I'm talking about right now, this is emotional labor that you're doing when you plan ahead for the holidays. And so not to mention the actual cooking and cleaning and traveling and plan making and communicating and all of these things. Sometimes we can get so wrapped up in the work of it that we don't enjoy it ourselves. And then when we fail to enjoy it, we then get bitter, right? And then that ups the ante for the next year because we're bringing in that like, I did everything last year and I didn't even have fun or I didn't even get to eat anything or I didn't even get a gift or whatever it is. I really think that it's important to be intentional about enjoying it. Like whatever goes on during this, I'm going to like carve out my moment to really take in the good parts and highlight the beautiful parts and look for the joy and internalize whatever sweet moments are going to happen. And that's the thing. Again, our brains are going to always pay much more attention to the negative, to the threats, to the bad stuff. And so that you have to work even harder about highlighting and savoring those good moments so that those Bad moments don't overshadow and overpower and steal the happiness and the joy that like really is what we're all after during these holiday celebrations. So again, there's a million ways to do this and think about this, but I'm just putting it out here very lightly. Just that like part of your job in your mental and emotional pre-work is thinking about like, how am I going to enjoy it? And how do I factor those things in, right? Whether it's sneaking off to go visit your favorite art gallery in your hometown that like, you know, no one else is going to enjoy, but it'll be a really poignant, fun moment for you. Work that in, whether you need to stop and get coffee before you arrive at your in-laws out, like whatever it is that you can sort of pack in moments of like calm and peace and joy for yourself. It's going to be so much better. And again, the more energy, the more you can lead with that festive, happy, calm energy, other people will follow your lead. And number five, we are not going to forget to debrief, right? Like after the holidays, let's talk about it. Let's see what went on. Let's think about what do you want to repeat for next year? Do we want to do something different? Let's figure out what was great. What do we want to change? Like really giving yourself time to reflect on your holiday experience And learn, again, we're learning about our partners still. It's an ongoing, you never stop learning. And we're all going to change. What felt really fun about the holidays at this part of your life might feel really different at a different part of your life. And so that's what you really want to stay in touch and talk about because the holidays, the tradition part can be beautiful and wonderful, but it also can leave us stuck sometimes feeling like we're not allowed to do something different when we're so desperate sometimes to do something different. So I really want to encourage you to take the time afterwards to just have a little touch base with your partner. And even if you can't, for some reason, get that conversation to happen, do it with yourself. Just jot down a few things, give yourself a voice memo, take a picture, do something to help like pinpoint what was good about this year or what you want to change so that next year you can go in 
with that knowledge and carry that wisdom forward so that we're always sort of like crafting and honing and changing and staying really in touch with our intentions, our creativity, and our happiness and joy around our holiday gatherings. So again, this is a tough, tough topic. It's big. There's lots of things that could go on. We've got so many people and priorities and things happening that like it is just a really great time to, again, do this emotional legwork ahead of time. Hopefully these five tips will help you navigate this holiday season and all the holiday seasons to come a little bit better. And in the meantime, I am wishing you nothing but bridal bliss. If you need me, don't hesitate to reach out. You need a bridal session. Everyone does. You deserve it. You need it. I cannot wait to connect with you. Jump on caramoreen.com and schedule yours now. Happy holidays, and I'll see you next time.